Man, indie RPGs are in a really weird place. As hopelessly romantic as that may sound, I still regard indie games as kind of the savior of gaming, because as much garbage as the indie market produces, one of its biggest strengths is the ability to focus. AAA titles too often try to give as broad of an audience as possible as much bang for their buck as possible, and consequently water down their mechanics and narrative as a compromise. And that makes me really appreciate smaller, more focused games games built entirely around exploring a few core mechanics, like Hyperlight Drifter and Free. However, I feel like that doesn't apply when it comes to RPGs. Certainly, the biggest appeal of a role-playing game is a vast interactive world and large amount of gameplay systems that provide options to the player. As a matter of fact, most of the classic, highly rated RPGs are, from any technical standpoint, completely unbalanced and unfocused, and generally kind of a gameplay mess, but people still love them because because in terms of role-playing, possibilities are more important than balance or polish. And that brings me to Masquerada Songs and Shadows, a game that, like many other indie RPGs made by a small team on a modest budget, is faced with exactly that dilemma. Great in what they focused on, but too limited to make a real lasting impact on the RPG market. So Masquerada is an isometric RPG and it takes place in the city-state of Ombra. Ombra is engulfed in a bitter civil war between the upper class, the government and multiple officially recognized guilds called the Masquerada, and the Mask Runners, a revolutionary group in the impoverished lower class. The player takes control of Cicero Gavar, a government inspector who, five years ago, when his brother became the Mask Runners leader and tried to overthrow the government was exiled, because Cicero chose not to report his brother's activities despite already being in the government's employ. The crown, however, now brings him back into its service, because a government researcher and close friend of Cicero has gone missing and two other inspectors already turned up dead looking for him, so his expertise is needed. As the names Masquerada and Maskrunners already imply, people in this universe utilize so-called masquerines, which are magic masks left by an ancient, long-gone civilization. These masks allow whoever put them on to wield elemental powers in battle, and are thus important to both the narrative as well as the combat engine. So, every party member you can play has a bunch of different skills in alignment with a respective element that you can upgrade, and the combat, like in many of the classics, is real-time with a pause function. There are, however, a few special mechanics that distinguish Masquerada from older isometric RPGs. For one thing, next to having a mana bar, there is also a guard meter that needs to be depleted before you can attack someone's hit points directly directly, but this can be bypassed with attacks from the side or the back, putting greater emphasis on positioning. Using spells and spending mana also charges up your mask, which in turn unlocks an ultimate ability depending on the mask you're wearing, but most important are probably the elemental combos. You see, some skills can place elemental tags on enemies, which can then be activated by each of the character's so-called signature skill, and depending on the elements of both tag and signature move, this can cause different effects. For example, combining fire and air this way causes vulnerability, water and earth causes a snare effect, and so on. While I was at first somewhat underwhelmed by the combat, I actually grew to like it towards the end, because the elemental moves plus the importance of positioning plus the various buffs, debuffs and crowd control effects you can unlock for your spells add a large amount of combinations to every encounter. And with the ability of reskilling your character between every mission, just experimenting with different setups never got old. I do, however, have some issues with the game's difficulty and controls. The difficulty mainly because enemy design in Masquerada is kinda lacking. Not the bosses, mind you, those are plenty and extremely varied in mechanics, but trash mobs are pretty much the opposite. Aside from a few AoE skills or teleport here and there, enemies are mostly threatening through their melee or ranged attacks, because Masquerada subscribes to the quantity over quality approach of challenge design, where higher difficulty just means more enemies dealing more damage. I really would have liked to see greater diversity here, like opponents that put up barriers or throw out strong debuffs or whatever just anything that adds more complexity depending on the enemy group composition. But I can still deal with that, what really annoyed me at times were the actual controls during combat. The game promises isometric real-time with pause RPG combat and claims to be inspired by games such as Baldur's Gate 2 and Dragon Age, but unfortunately you can also tell that it was made with a console version in mind and the keyboard and mouse controls have to suffer for it. Moment of real talk here, I don't like when my party members move on their own. 
I want to play on a challenging difficulty in full control of my units and with a party AI deactivated. You know, like you played isometric RPGs back in the 2000s. Call me a PC elitist if you want, but keyboard and mouse are the superior control scheme for such a micromanagement heavy playstyle. So why doesn't Masquerada let me select and move more than one unit at a time? Is it because that wouldn't be as feasible with a controller? Why during active gameplay can't I edge scroll the screen with my mouse and the camera is always fixed on the character I'm moving? Is it because when you move with the d-pad that would be the better solution? And why on earth can't I queue up commands so that I can tell a character to use a skill and immediately go attack afterwards instead of having to do all of that one pause at a time every time for three different party members? Granted none of this is a deal breaker because with the pause function you have all the time in the world to execute whatever it is you want to do, but especially against a lot of damage heavy encounters, the lacking controls make micromanagement way more clunky than it needs to be. Just look at my combat footage, I have to pause constantly because that is what enemy damage output on hard mode in this game demands of you. Some control issues aside though, the combat is at least part of the game that the devs could clearly focus on. The rest of the world offers almost no interactivity whatsoever. The story is entirely linear, which by itself of course isn't a problem, but you are completely gated through the entire game with a single objective marker that you just follow at any given point in time. There are no random NPCs to talk to, no dialogue options to choose from, there aren't even any shops or items in general. The entire game is pretty much just either combat or watching the story happen with almost no player input required, and with its predefined characters and dialogue, Masquerada is I guess more like a JRPG than a western one in that sense? And you know what, that is entirely fine with me, I completely understand when a small indie studio doesn't have the budget to fill the entire world with interactable objects and role playing options. But if you as a consumer are looking to buy a proper RPG, it is important to know that these limitations exist, especially when the RPG in question invokes the vast isometric classics as part of its inspiration. Now there are still some objects to pick up in most areas, extra mascarines can unlock new ultimates and collectible materials can be converted into passive buffs for your characters, but that is all extremely basic. What deserves special mention however are the additional codex entries you can find, because while the world of Masquerada leaves me wanting more on a mechanical level, the lore in this game is absolutely superb and probably the main reason why I ultimately ended up really admiring it. You see, I like fleshed out fictional universes, I like Warhammer, I like Star Trek, I just love when a fictional world contains so much lore you can fill an entire wiki with maps, factions, characters and historical events. And Masquerada is arguably the most impressive and thorough attempt at building such a world within just a single indie game I have ever seen. Right off the bat, the visual style is incredibly striking, as the masquerines and the differently colored clothes that all the guilds employ resemble a fancy, never ending masquerade ball. And thematically this works out in multiple ways, because even though these guilds and the registry come together in cooperation to form the governing body of the city, the color coded dresses symbolize allegiance to one's own guild first, and the masks symbolize hidden agendas. So the player is constantly visually reminded that the city's main characteristics are intrigue and corruption, which keep the guilds occupied amongst themselves while the lower class drowns in poverty. The main way this lore is portrayed is through codex entries that unlock as the main character Cicero fills up his journal about the city over the course of the game, and the depth and detail in which this lore is covered is staggering. You can learn about everything, historical events, ties to other nations, the districts, the factions, the kinds of powers and training the different regiments employ, and so on and so forth. And the entries not only consist of drab descriptions, but also anecdotes and opinions of Cicero himself as it is his journal we are reading. It has to be admitted however that the codex is still basically a massive lore dump. After almost every scene new entries pop up for you to read, sometimes to an almost absurd degree. It's beautiful. Now personally when I really like something, I can have the patience of a saint, and so I diligently sat through every single entry in the game, and in Masquerada's defense this is just one small indie game. It can't look back on decades of people getting accustomed with its universe and its rules, so there is a lot that needs to be established, but it certainly isn't elegant to throw all this text at the player, and in my mind anyone has a right to find it annoying regardless of how well it is written. But it is well written. 
authority. That I want to stress. As a matter of fact, if you play this game, you really should follow the law for multiple reasons. It clearly is another part that the devs focused on heavily, but also the dialogue is drenched in foreign words you will need to understand to even get what's going on. Not only are there a lot of made up localities and historical events, Masquerada's universe also takes a lot of inspiration from the Renaissance and thus incorporates a lot of Italian and Latin terms like inspettore and media and the game is not shy about throwing them around. Certainly that makes it harder to follow, but made up terminology can make a fictional world feel much more credible and Masquerada pulls this off well. To give an example, music is an important part of this universe, partly in singing songs to remember family and loved ones that passed away. And in the so-called Hall of Songs, people hang magical chimes in the branches of a massive tree to play songs reminding the city of their family's legacy. The more important and honorable your family name is, the bigger your branch and the more songs will be played in your name. So when the main character later in the game gets crossed by someone he knew and then calls that person a songless whore, that insult really struck me because it came off as natural and consistent with the world, which shows good writing. But the lore can only be a framework for the actual story that is being told and I really enjoyed that as well. The investigation into the disappearance of his old friend, which the main character is tasked with, is actually a clever starting point for the narrative. It sets him up to discover important secrets about the masks, doubling down on exploring the extensive lore of Masquerada, but also, since he basically takes on the role of a detective, the game has a good reason to make Cicero visit very different parts of the city, make him talk to all kinds of people and take on the help of a diverse set of supporting characters, all with their own issues and ideas. Basically, while following the plot, the player is exposed to the corruption and the conflict in this city at every corner. Conflicts between the guilds, between the classes, within your own party. Hell, Cicero is the personification of this conflict, as he himself is torn between his position as a loyal high-ranking official and the fact that he was born and raised in the lower class together with his brother, who later became the leader of the rebels. Yet, as dark as all of that may sound, Masquerada's writing actually has a lot of heart. Many characters here show personal growth over the course of the game and without wishing to spoil too much, this is ultimately a story about uniting in face of a bigger threat and it shines a genuinely heartwarming light on our capacity as people to overcome our differences. And with all the divisiveness in the current political climate all around the world, that might be a tad naive, but I find it to be a welcome message. So that's ultimately what Masquerada's Songs and Shadows does and does not offer. It has a great setting and story, decent but also flawed combat on a distant second place and then unfortunately not much else in terms of actual depth, role playing or character build. So if you're looking to pick up this game, you should be aware of what it is you want. If that is narrative, go for it, but if you're looking for a deep RPG, you will be disappointed. But maybe Masquerada's constraints can also work in its favor, because RPG RPGs are certainly one of the hardest genres to get into and there are very few games that make a real time with pause combat actually manageable for a newcomer, so with a limited character customization and if you put it on normal difficulty, this might actually make a good entry point into the genre. Just don't stop your journey there. Bogan, signing out. Hey there, if you're still with me at this point, I just want to say thank you for watching my video, it actually means a lot to me. If you want to support me any further, then please feel free to, you know, leave me a like on the video, subscribe to my channel, or just leave me a comment down there in the comment section telling me what it is you think. And if you want to check out anything else I do on here, then there should be a few video suggestions on your screen right now. For example, there is my video on Free, a recent isometric boss rush game. Or you can check out my Never Forget series, where I basically talk about my favorite games of all time and pay them a little tribute, in this case Guild Wars 1, which is a wonderful MMO. And also, if you want to see me go a little bit deeper into game design, then there is my video on Soma, where I basically talk about how that game uses the player perspective as a tool to tell its story. So I hope you find anything there that you like, and I hope to see you on my next video. Until then, take care, bye bye.